All right, all right. What about Shinobi 3? Ooh, on Sega see, that's Genesis. so good. I, that wasn't even in my wheelhouse right now, dude. All right, we are with Tyler from My Retro Life, one of the most loved shows on our channel. And, uh,. Tyler and I wanted to talk about that, but first, before we get into a little bit more about My Retro Life in Season 2, when we set, told like the audience, Tyler, that we're going to do a podcast, it was like the resounding answer was for us to talk about Sega, and yeah. I was like, okay, let's talk about Sega, Yeah. but the biggest thing about Sega, Tyler, now I know you're a hardcore uh, Sega guy, yeah. as a lot of us are, even I'm growing to be more of a Sega guy, but the question at hand, always, it's like, no matter what in the world, when you talk about Super Nintendo versus Sega Genesis, yeah, there are a lot of people that say Sega, but if you go online and you look at websites and talk among people, most people, I'd say literally probably 90% of the time, say Super Nintendo is the better console. How does that, like, first of all, make you feel? <laughs> uh, it it kind of makes me feel sad because so many people just... Are they ready to write it off because, you know, Nintendo's this bigger name. Nintendo's been making consoles way past 2001 when Sega called it quits in the hardware business. Um, it's just, it, I feel like it's unwarranted bias. I think there's a lot of Nintendo fans out there. I'm not going to say fanboys. Yeah. <laughs> but like there's just fans in general who are they're, they'll so quickly write off Sega because oh that's that failed company that's that failed of course Super Nintendo is better because Sega failed um, okay but when but when looking at directly just at Super Nintendo yeah. just at Sega Genesis let's say Nintendo's existence wasn't existing besides that yeah. and Sega didn't exist besides Sega Genesis how come the Super Nintendo and I agree is I mean I, I love both but why is it that like is it something specific about the Super? Is it the mm. the the first party games that that stand out to people? I mean, what is yeah. the argument you, that you always hear as a Sega guy when you're defending it? What's like okay. the argument most people come at you with? Like, hey, dude, but Super Nintendo is yeah. better because of. I, th I think you hit it on the head. I think it's the first party games are so incredible on the Super Nintendo. They're so yep. legendary. They're just in, just amazing games with so much depth, so much uh, artistic merit, even. Um, that, you know, from the soundtracks to the color to the graphics and, and the usage of the characters. I'm, th I'm thinking of games like Super Metroid. I'm thinking of games like Super Mario World. Oh, boy. Uh, you know, the Donkey Kong Country. These games are so stacked. They're, they're, they're so stacked that I think people automatically think, well, of course it's better. But they're not diving deeper into the Sega Genesis catalog. I, I, I think you said it perfectly right there because even me like growing up with the Super Nintendo and I love the Super Nintendo it's my favorite console of all time when I play the Sega Genesis like you said I more like kind of like had it and played it at friends so I just kind of wrote it off as hey they don't have these extra amazing games but really we're just a lot of us were just failing to dive deeper right. because we all we all know the name Mario so we jump in we know the name we know the Metroid game so we'll jump in we know Kirby will jump in Donkey Kong will jump in but on Sega Genesis it's like growing up if you're like oh Gunstar Heroes yeah. I, I don't really know what that is so it's probably not that great right oh uh you, a bunch of games. There's a bunch of games like that on Sega where you could Vector Man that I love now where it's like back in the day you might just be like, oh, I don't know what this is. I'm probably going to just write it off, you know? Yeah, totally. I mean, there, yeah, there's tons of like, I guess, you know, the hidden gems is thrown around so loose for sure. these days. But it's true. I mean, uh, the game I have in the background here, Ristar, Ristar, uh, however you want to pronounce it, is, I mean, it's incredible. It's an amazing platformer that, you know, didn't really get its time in the sun because it was a later release. Uh, you've got other Sega Genesis games. Mega Rocket Knight Adventures. Rocket Knight Adventures. Incredible. Which is so good. It's so good. Konami developed. Uh, yep. Made by the same guys, uh, the development team that was actually behind Gunstar Heroes uh, that when they left for Treasure. Uh, it just uh, incredible, incredible game. Uh, uh, you've got uh, Mega Turrican. I feel like Mega Turrican is a game that never gets its its due. And and you know, I guess that was on the Super Nintendo also, but it is a completely kind of different game. The, the stages yeah. are different, everything. I, I feel like that game is an example actually of a game that runs better on the Sega Genesis, for whatever reason, the Sega Genesis just had like a, they, they you know, they, they use that term blast processing and stuff like that, but, <laughs> but there but there was something about well, the, the we hardware We got mode speed. seven, okay? Yeah, 
That's true. <laughs> Mode 7, yeah, that, it, that was really cool on Super Nintendo. And see, I, I'm, I'm not a Sega fanboy. I'm not a Nintendo fanboy. I love yeah. both consoles. I grew up with oh. both consoles. And I, I agree lo- with you. Yeah, I, I love them both for different reasons. And uh, But yeah, as far as like people wanting to slam, I think that needs to stop. I think, I think there needs to be more yeah. of a understanding of like, wait, if I look a little deeper... Um, I, I, here's another thing. Uh, There's something I wanted to bring up. But people are so quickly to write off Sega Genesis because of the music. I hear this all the time. I well, see okay, this so that's what own. I wanted to jump into. Since you're saying that, I was basically yeah. going to talk about each kind of aspect of the systems, yeah. like their strengths. So uh-huh. let's talk about let's talk about music. Since you were okay. jumping into music, what do you feel about Sega? Is wh- their strengths in the music department? So the, the Sega Genesis had some different sound drivers uh, that. You, you, could, you could tell actually as you're listening to the game, oh man, this is using this driver or this is using this driver. Yeah. I, off the top of my head, I'm not like this uh, genius knowing uh, every sound driver, the names of, of each thing. I, yeah, I don't yeah. think that technical. I'm more of a music appreciator. Uh, but I can tell when it's using a different driver. And there's one that was often used by American developed um, games. Uh, when okay. they were developed in in the United States, there there was this really puny, really thin sounding yeah. music yep. quality yep. to the soundtracks. That that's what often people are pointing to when they yeah. when they say Genesis music is terrible, this yeah. and that. But they're not listening to some of these incredible soundtracks developed by Japanese companies. Yep. Um, off the top of my head, uh, uh, Thunder Force Four, which is oh uh, yeah, Lightning Force here in the states, Castlevania, um, Castlevania Bloodlines. Uh, you've got uh, even some uh, lesser known titles like uh, Two Crude Dudes and uh, Captain America uh, and the Avengers. Yeah. Uh, th- th- there's certain games where it's like you hear them and they're, they're full and they just, yeah, yeah. They just have this rocking kind of. I'd say arc. definitely the Sega yeah. has always had that gritty rock and roll feel. Even if it's not rock and roll, you can kind of listen yeah. to it. And it just, like I've said before, it just feels edgy. It feels like yeah. something that makes you feel, especially as a kid growing up, you kind of, you know, tune into what you're with. You kind of become that. And as yeah. a kid, you hear those rocking tracks, like you said, and you're head banging, you're going crazy. But I, I have to jump into the Super Nintendos, not saying this is like a defense office thing, but for me, the Super Nintendo, its plus has always been like that that orchestrative, full, mm. warm sounding music. But then again, you also get your rock and roll stuff as well, like some of the Star Fox songs and others, you know, where you feel yeah. not only just that orchestra sound, but you can also get that 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 rock sound, that rough sound. And uh, I don't know, I feel like Super Nintendo music to me, and again, this isn't like picking one or the other right now, but I just feel like uh, I've always loved the Super Nintendo sound is like probably that or the NES is like my greatest sounds of all yeah. time, musically. I, uh, I, I think so too. I mean, I, I think there's some amazing uh, soundtracks on Super Nintendo. Uh, you've got Castlevania IV. Um, you've got uh, Act Razor, which I think is one so of the, good. the most like kind of underrated soundtracks on the Super Nintendo. Um, that was actually written by Yuzo Koshiro, who did yeah. Streets of Rage on yep. Genesis. See, that's another thing. Which it, is another it, great it game. To, <laughs> it comes down to the composer, yeah. uh, oftentimes too. And you know, just like with anything in life and just like with anything like on social media or, or just the world we live in, people are so quick to just pick out the negatives. They of course. Jump, they, yeah. they jump That's on the world. They, they find something wrong with uh, something and they just are ready to say that everything is like that. Oh, they, yeah. They, yeah. Ge- they generalize. And the same thing happens with, I think, these console wars, especially with the Super Nintendo and Genesis. It's like... Yeah. You know, people want to win the fight. People want to win what they want to stick with what they believe, and they don't want to. Which, like, which is learn. so funny because that was such like a schoolyard thing to do, which is fun and it has its place. But you think yeah. as adults, there's still you would think that goes away, but a lot of times doing a show, people <laughs> no. still in the comments like legitimately get mad and are like, "Hey, you idiot! The Super Nintendo isn't better because of this." Or, "Hey, dude, you're stupid." The Sega Genesis. I'm like, really? Like. It's- it's so ridiculous. Man. I, I wanted to ask you, Tyler, a simple, basic question. What's like your favorite graphic styling on the Sega Genesis? Like, what when you see, like, what game do you see, and you're like, oh, that that's Sega Genesis graphics. Like the way I, because yeah. I like my games on Super Nintendo. You know, like Chrono Trigger or or even Donkey Kong Country or even the game Hook, where I'm like, oh, those are the graphics I love in the Super Nintendo. Yeah. What about you? Is kind of like your go-to graphics for, for the Genesis. I think for me, it's the it's the games with. Um, 
I don't know, games like Alien Storm and oh, uh, yeah, Go yeah. Go Golden Axe. Ooh, well, that's um, one of my favorites like, right there, too. Th yeah, they they had like a look to them, and those were developed by the same team at Sega. Oh, see, uh, I didn't know that. And, yeah, they were the same arcade development team. I, I forget their name right now. But uh, they um, they had this kind of rich, detailed look to their backgrounds, very colorful. Um, and, and just their character sprites, too, were just very, I don't know, mature looking. Yeah, yeah. And, and that was something I loved about the Sega Genesis um, library. So many of the games... Um, they st altered beast. Same same guys did that one. Got it. Um, they 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 kind of struck this. You know, they were fun and they're frantic and they're arcade style. And but at the same time, they had like this mature quality to them that um, I don't know. Just as I got older, it just became much more appealing to me. Yeah. Um, and I, I learned to love those games for that reason. I, I think of. Um, Oh, uh, I think of the Virgin games that came out yeah. that like uh, were, were made like um, uh, I know I, I'm, I'm talking about mature, but you know because Virgin did Aladdin and and, and uh, Disney, so that doesn't make any but, sense. But so Aladdin got a sword. But Aladdin had a sword. <laughs> but I was going to say too that Virgin made RoboCop versus Terminator. Oh yeah. And on the Sega Genesis, that was like I mean like it had tons of violence yep. in it and stuff, and it was like you know blood everywhere. But there, the sprite quality of those games, uh, the the backgrounds, the um, I think of Sega CD games even. I, you oh know, yeah, that's kind of a cousin to the Sega Genesis. Same hardware really, uh, except for, for with CD. You know, you had games like the Terminator on there. Um, you had um, Spider Man versus the Kingpin, Batman Returns, and all these. Oh were, yeah, were, they they were really good. They yeah. were really excellent games, and a lot of them were better in their Sega CD versions than than the the Genesis counterparts. You, you know what I um, what I noticed too, which is interesting right now, even in the collecting world, not as so much. Not even so much as so as the Super Nintendo versus Sega Genesis, but I've noticed, and even talking to a lot of people, that Sega collecting is getting really hot right now. Mm. And a lot of people, I, when we were at the expo, we went to the Game On Expo this weekend. Uh, a lot of people are saying that they're like, "Hey, dude, Sega is like because a lot of people are asking for mm. Sega who used to not ask for Sega." We even saw some like really cool vintage Sega signs, and the people who had them was like, "Yeah, dude, we got this because Sega's hot right now." Yeah, I, I think the more as time goes on. Uh, especially the longer Sega is just kind of out of the, the console business. People yeah. will start discovering this this incredible library of, of games. Yeah. Not not just the Genesis, but Sega CD, the Saturn, Dreamcast. 32X. Um, 32X. Uh, you know, there, there's so much there um, yeah. to really dive into, especially collecting. Oh, yeah, for uh, sure. And, and I think it's going to only become more appealing because people are going to get tired of uh, I've I've already done the I've already collected Nintendo and NES. You know what do I collect now? Yeah, oh, and I, I agree with that. That that's for know. me something that's been really important to me in my collecting journey. And not even specifically speaking Sega, but just like totally like you said, switching things up is huge because so often we can get bored of what we're doing. You know whether it's playing video games or collecting games. When you're kind of doing yeah. the same thing over and over, you know, as a Nintendo guy, I'm like I've seen a million copies of you know Super Mario World and a million copies of Super Metroid which I love them, but I'm like, you know, it's not too often I see Truxton or Musha, you know, it's like, yeah. it's kind of fun for me to dive into those different realms of collecting. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, kind of going back to, for some reason I just thought of this, um, yeah. going back to kind of the divide with Nintendo and Sega fans and which system's better. I think it honestly comes down to like one thing. Yes. Are you more of an arcade style gamer? That's true. Or... Are you more of a adventure platforming, like yeah, yeah? Just N Super Nintendo and Nintendo, they made themselves famous with games like Super Mario World um, and and you know Metroid and, and these these real long sprawling adventures uh, that took you know many hours to complete. You had you know save uh, files and stuff yep. like Zelda, you know RPGs, oh. and and Sega. They weren't known for that. They weren't famous for that. They uh -uh. came out of the arcades. Uh, Ninten Nintendo came out of the arcades too, but they 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 carved a different path totally. on the Nintendo. With and, and that's not to say that both of them don't have those. Both of them do have those yeah. options. But but like you said, Nintendo it does have that more like nine times out of ten you're going to be able to find a game like that as opposed to Sega. It's going to be more of an arcade style, yeah. beat the game, get it and go type of game. You know. Right. Exactly. So many arcade ports made its way to the Sega Genesis. I mean just tons and and you know 
the Sega's hard, so the Sega Genesis hardware was actually faster than the Super Nintendo's. It had like a faster um, processor to, uh, to uh, you know, uh, this is, I'm sounding like I don't know what I'm talking about, but because okay. I, I don't know the specifics or the, the, the tech on it, but I know that the Sega Genesis was faster. It might not, might not have the same graphical capabilities like as the Super Nintendo, but it was faster. So that's where that whole blast processing thing came from. Yeah, which is like, great. It was like, look, well, it can often move these graphics faster on the screen. Uh, yeah. So, so that lent itself to arcade gameplay. That that yeah. actually, yep. you know, so you know, Super Nintendo. When I think of those games, I think, you know, that oftentimes I'm going to maybe sit down and maybe slowly digest this game and maybe yeah, just yeah, kind of yeah. take you're right. it you're in. Absolutely right. Take in the atmosphere. It's not uh, as quick to jump in and go unless you're playing like Contra Three or something like that. Well, but yeah, exactly. And that's why shooters are technically are, are typically regarded as better on the Sega Genesis. They're faster. They've got more like parallax scrolling typically. Oh, the shmups for, for sure. The shmups, yeah. For some reason, you know, and, and I think it, it, it all has to do, you know, you look at Gradius 3, that was a launch title yeah. on the Super Nintendo, and yep. that w that one's plagued with slowdown. And, yeah, and, and then there is ones that are good, like UN Squadron and yes, Arrow that Fighters one, and all that. that one but, did, yeah. It does also right. come down to programming, yeah, for sure. Tyler, Tyler, before we kind of go on into my retro life, which I want to talk about, wait, two more things. Uh, sure. What's your what's what's a game you would recommend to everyone that's like a hidden gem on Sega Genesis? In case somebody, even like myself, who isn't the most hardcore Sega Genesis guy. Okay, hidden gem on Sega Genesis. Um, this is first thing that came to my head. I mentioned Mega Turrican earlier, so yeah, I'm not going to mention that again. But um, uh, it's a game by Data East called High Seas Havoc. Oh, and wow, it's, never heard yeah, of it. It's very hidden. It's a cool. Sonic clone. Often people, times people will call it a Sonic clone. And it really is for the most part. Uh, but it's really good. Like the, the graphics are rich. The colors, um, it's got great parallax scrolling and just fluid 60 frames a second gameplay. You play a uh, as a like a sea otter character like Sonic, but like a sea otter. <laughs> uh, and he's a pirate. He, he, he's going after uh, pirates. On wow. the op on yeah, it's it's really good. I would definitely check that out. Great rock and soundtrack, um, and uh, a, a really good example of a good soundtrack on the Genesis. Well, if and anyone's just, ever looking for a basically a channel dedicated to our conversation, they should check out Console Wars. That yes. channel, they're really yes. cool. They do they basically take games that are made in the Super Nintendo, games that are made on the Sega Genesis, and they just side by side everything. It's really cool. Yeah. Uh, Console Tyler, Wars is fantastic. Th this is this is our quick little knockout round. I told you to have three games ready. This is basically like all right for anybody who wants to do the old school rivalry Sega Genesis versus the Super Nintendo. Give me a game. Let's do three games. I'll give you a game. You give me a game I'll, that are kind of like where you're just like. Oh boy, oh, if you don't have this game, yeah. your console is in need. Yeah. I will I will start off, Tyler. Okay. And I'm gonna start off with what what some claim to be is the greatest game of all time. Okay. Which is, which is Super Metroid. Oh, uh, well, yeah. I mean, there's no denying that. You, you, it's Super Metroid. It's, it's, it's one of the greatest games ever made. Yeah. I mean, just, all right, you gotta give me one, give me one. Punch back. All right, all right, all right, right. well, Se Sega Genesis is better than Super Nintendo because of Gunstar Heroes. Oh, see? Now, that, that, I, we mentioned, we talked about Gunstar Heroes earlier, but we, we, let's let's examine that a little bit more. Gunstar Heroes is incredible. Game design, character design, the, the fastness. The, 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 the movement and flow of that game is perfect. It's insanity, and it's so well to, you control it so well. It's two players simultaneous. It's, su it's just such a blast. Uh, and it, it's so creative in its boss designs, its character. I mean, it, uh, it's one of that's one of the best games. All right, ever. Tyler, a link to the past. Oh uh, yeah, let's see. There's a top tell you, Super Nintendo stacked, right? Is, we, we were talking it, about this. Is it earlier. the greatest game of all time? Maybe it's one. It's it's one of the greatest games of <laughs> yeah, all time yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, right, Tyler, hit me, hit me back with something good. All right, all right. What about? Shinobi 3. Ooh, on Sega see, that's Genesis. so good. I, that wasn't even in my wheelhouse right now, dude. Yep. Shinobi 3, <sighs> just as far from a, from a design aspect, from a graphical standpoint, uh, gameplay too. It's, it's, not a too, it's not too challenging a game. You can get right into it and you can actually, you know, it, it, it'll put up a fight. But man, some of those bosses, like the, the, the stage boss on the, in the lab with the aliens, and he comes out of the ground and he's like this brain monster. I mean. <sighs> Have you, have you seen this this stage? Yeah. Uh, yep. It's in, it's incredible. Uh, Shinobi three. 
I'd have to fire back with that one. Right, I, I want to say so many games right now. Like I want to say I the know. Donkey Kong Country games. I want to yeah. say Final Fantasy games. But I think I think the more basic you go, if you say Super Mario World, is it oh. is it the greatest platformer ever made? Well, my friend, you're you're there. You're nearly there. You're, I mean, you're, you're right. It is one of the greatest platformers ever made. But I counter that. Oh no. I counter that. <laughs> Don't you dare. With Sonic the Hedgehog 3. It's so good. Is it rival with the classic perfect games? Plus Knuckles. Oh, yeah, dude. I'm a Knuckles Sonic guy for sure. Sonic and Knuckles. If you attach Sonic the Hedgehog 3, do that the full experience the way it was supposed to be. Sonic the Hedgehog 3 plus Sonic and Knuckles. That gaming experience, I honestly, truthfully enjoy that more than Super Mario World because it's just... It, I mean, I don't know if you know the story, but that like was how it was originally designed. It was supposed to be yep. um, a longer game, but Sega wanted to get it out for Christmas. So Dude, like, I just okay, watched a whole documentary on it like two days ago. Did you? Yeah. I'm not even kidding. Yeah, and uh, man, but man, when you put those games together now, truthfully, I get, you know, it's true. You do have yeah. to put them together. You yep. know, it, it's not really it's one It's kind of fun, it's kind of fun. But uh, I would say that that, um, I don't know, man. I, I, uh, well, that, I know we named the knockout like, punch. Say it again. <laughs> is that the knockout punch? Uh, my knockout punch is I, honestly, I just feel like there's so many games in both of these libraries that are like stupidly good, like you, Comic Zone yeah. and Fantasy Star, and we got Don can't. Donkey Kong Countries, and we have even games that are on other consoles like Batman Returns, and games that just are done perfectly for both consoles. So uh, the winner is yeah. The winner is is uh, us. The game cast is, ga is, ga is gamers. Yeah, I mean we yeah. we we are the winners. People that love all games win and people that want to stay in one yeah. crowd they they lose <laughs> and i guess the, i guess the motivation for me to want to do this topic besides people talking about it is i really challenge anyone who like me and a lot of people out there if you look at most top tens nine times out of ten super nintendo comes out of top uh, always almost yeah. to to look to dive deeper into the sega genesis library because there is those games that could turn you and even if there is no turning and winning side uh sega genesis no matter what is just a fantastic console and it uh, it doesn't deserve to always be put you know below the super nintendo i feel like the the numbers should have been evened out a lot more than that yeah totally tyler all right Let's talk about this. If you guys don't know Tyler, who he is or why he's here, uh, we have a sh series on our show called My Retro Life, which is honestly, in my opinion, one of the most beloved shows uh, on YouTube. Uh, Tyler grew up with an amazing father who we all call dad because we feel like we grew up with him too. And um, Tyler's dad was filming most of their lives together, playing video games, documenting their journey, almost like Let's Plays and unboxings and Christmases and vlogs and trips back in the 80s. And all this footage was left for Tyler to, to use. And Tyler, being a video creator, made a series called My Retro Life where it's narrated, it's a storytelling documentary about video games, mostly Sega focused, but yes, Nintendo as well. And um, it's amazing, and a lot of people, that's not what I'm here to talk about or promote, but there is a season two coming, and uh, yeah. with that with that announcement that's so exciting, Tyler, you asked people on Facebook a couple questions and I wanted to ask them to you. Okay, cool. Eric Plunk says, what sort of process would your father have to go through to import games back in the 90s? Wow. So yeah, if you watching the series, people people will definitely see that a lot of what we got was um, like Japanese imports. We, we that which was, is so uh, cool to that, watch. It was a specialty, and and truth be told, so cool. there was a shop in Houston where I grew up uh, at the time called GameTronics, and this store um, put even in the '90s. This was such a rare thing. Uh, was a specialty shop, gaming shop for imports. It was unheard of back then and really unheard of now. And because this store existed not far from where we live, we, we were there all the time. And that is, we got a bulk of our Super Famicom and Sega wow. Mega Drive games from the guy, uh, from those guys that, that own that shop. Well, I'd, I, I just have to say that it's super cool to watch you guys do the imports and Japanese games because seeing you guys do that now wouldn't be as impressive because a lot of people do it. But it was really cool because nobody I knew in the 80s or 90s was ever focused on looking at imports at all. It was just like, why would I do that? You know what I mean? Yeah. He yep. had that collector's and he visionary did. mentality before it was a cool thing to have that mentality. Uh, he was always in, interested in Japanese stuff too, because like uh, I remember him talking about, he loved like 
he grew up, he grew up with uh, Speed Racer and Astro Boy, these uh, classic, you know, 60s uh, anime yeah, great. cartoons and stuff. And so, yeah, he always had a, 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 an interest in animation in particular. So that led him down the road of like Japanese imports. Um, oh, that's amazing. All right, next one, Tyler, Retro Wolf. He asks, or he says, we have seen lots of memories. What memories would you have forgotten about? Like, wow, I forgot about that. If your dad hadn't put it on videotape. So what things would you have forgotten about if it wasn't there for you to watch on, you know, your VHSs? Okay, well, two things, two things come to mind. One is an episode that's already out in season one. Uh, it's up on Pixel Game Squad and it's the Sega Interventions uh, oh, so great. episode. The, the, I knew, so my family went to Disney and my dad specifically planned a route through Epcot because he knew that Sega had their interventions display there. And so cool, dude. So cool. He, yeah, so we went there and I, I always remembered it. I never knew that he got it on video because I always thought, because I, I think I I'd, I'd went through my footage and the footage he shot and I thought I had looked at every tape and I just assumed that they wouldn't let him in to the Sega Interventions display, the, the Interventions with the camera. I, I figured wow. that that was probably the case. But then uh, I'd already been doing the series and I one day was kind of looking through that tape again, thinking, man, let me look through here again. Oh, so I, I cool, so dude. Of, and then I found it on like the last part of part two of Disneyland trip, you know, kind of thing. Oh. And, and it was there when I found it, I was like, oh, this is so cool. It was it's not, so it's not cool, just dude. in my memory, it's actually on tape. Um, so that one, and then there's one coming in season two, uh, uh -oh. where, uh, I don't know if I want to say it, honestly. Don't say it too much. Yeah. Is it, is, don't, I, uh, I would, I would keep yeah. a little bit of a secret, but Tyler, there, you know what I have to say, man, you, 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 you have the coolest dad in the world, man. There well, is not thanks, many man. people that have dads that like would even care to go to something like that because Sega is there. You know what I mean? I know. I, no, it, I, I appreciate it. I, but, I, I, every time I hear comments and, and thank you, Aaron, uh, yeah. for saying that, you know, I, I, you know, a lot of people know that dad's no longer with us. And yep. so it's, it's so awesome to be able to share this show and, and share him with, he was, because, he was such a generation ahead because yeah. like this generation going forward, like you and I, with our children will want to go to places because Sega's there because Nintendo's there. But back then your, your dad didn't have this like previous generation as a kid playing video games. So yeah. for him to be that excited as an adult is so cool because the stereotype is always you know, people, our father's ages is like, ah, eh, video games, get out of here with that. What is right. this? You know what I mean? Yeah. I think if it weren't for his love for film and cartoons and he was kind so of a cool. big kid. Yeah. He loved like Abbott and Costello. Be oh, me, my dad too, for you sure. Know, yeah. You know, stuff like that. Yeah. And, and I, Laurel I, I, and Hardy. Laurel and Hardy. Yeah. And he saw video games as a way to, um, that was basically taking film and putting it in a new medium. He saw the way video games were evolving from Pitfall, because he was there from the beginning with it. And he saw how quickly it was evolving and becoming this cinematic, uh, incredible artistic expression. And he just loved that. He loved that uh, that that aspect of it. And I think that's it's, what really- it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing to watch. Mm -hmm. uh, let me get one more question out uh, for you. Sure. And then uh, you could answer. I think this is a two-parter. Uh, Justin Wood asks, how many hours of footage do you go through for each episode? Also, out of every episode, which one has meant the most to you? I say answer that part for us. Which which episode so far has just meant the most to you where you're like, man, that that is like defines what this the heart is in this show? Um, I think, you know, I think it's going to be, this. it's a toss-up between two episodes. And it's it's probably either the Christmas '91 episode oh, where so great. Uh, yeah where uh, we do the uh, we get Golden Axe and Quack Shot Donald Duck on Genesis so and, good I and remember Cas it Castlevania on Super yep. Nintendo and the reason for that one being so special to me is that well it was just a real special Christmas that I actually remember and I was still pretty young but I remember it vividly um, but also somehow in the editing when I was editing it and writing the the script where I narrate you know, the story. Um, I, I got to this part where I show this shot or I, I start talking about my cousins in New York and how like, yeah. I start talking about how we missed each other, but how we were connected, even though we were far apart, we were connected through the games and, <sighs> and through my dad. 
and yep. and it's so true like we were close as a family and so but to really we, we missed each other we didn't get to hang out with each other because we were so far apart but yeah. it was the games that kept us so connected and, and my dad and there's a shot of my dad like um raising me to like put the star on the christmas tree it's oh like, yeah it's like i don't know I, even when I made the, the episode, I, I knew I was going to use that clip, but I didn't know how much it would emotionally affect me uh, oh, until it was sure. actually done and watching it. And yeah, that one really hits me hard. That one. I think I think that from the comments and myself, even before I knew you, just starting to watch your stuff, uh, you know, there's that that quote that your dad says, "Enough to make a grown man cry," and it's mm. just funny because that statement has become so true for people who watch the show. I feel like that's like a, a, a real statement that captures, you know, encapsulates what the show does because you read those comments and I know you've done it, man. I'd say seven out of 10 men in there, you know, women or men, it doesn't matter, say that, man, this makes me cry, you know, because we have, like you said, you have that emotional attachment, but even us living it through you to be able to see this footage, you know, it get, it gets to us, you know? Yeah, no, that's awesome. I mean, it's awesome that it, it it's, it's cool when I read comments when they're like, I don't know you and I have nothing to do with your family, but for some reason I can relate to this. Isn't uh, it weird? Is it, but it's awesome. Yeah. It's so cool. It, it, it's, it's this weird thing that um, has become very special, uh, you know, when making the episodes and the videos. It's, um, I think it's kind of along those lines of when, when somebody says like, you know, just be yourself. Uh, just yeah. be yourself because there's so many others out there that are just like you and you don't even know it yep um and and so th it's so true you know and that's what's cool about like the youtube age and just yeah. the social media age we're in right now is that people have learned to just be themselves and yep and and not try to be something corporate or, or some some other kind of entity or something just be yourself and yep. that's what i've tried yourself, to do man with this series i've just tried to you know where you and I, I you know guys like yeah. you and i and nes complex and all, it's a gabo it's funny how close we've all gotten by being real with each other about real life also, you know, about even outside of YouTube, it's like, hey, when we're real with each other, it's like, wow, let's let's connect more. We have a lot in common as far as real life, yeah, you know. Totally. T Tyler, uh, before we wrap, give 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 us a 10 second, 20 second wrap up of everything you want to say about my retro life. I know you have season two coming. I know you have a Patreon to help make that happen. Tell sure. us about it. Well, I just want to thank you guys, uh, everybody watching who has been watching My Retro Life on Pixel Game Squad. It's it's so awesome to have um, you guys watching. Thank you, Aaron, and and everybody involved for just you know having the show be a part of Pixel Game Squad. It's been such a, a blessing, pleasure. really. And and uh, so I just yeah, yeah I want to thank everybody watching and involved. Um, and hey, there's more coming. If you want to be involved in the production, there is a Patreon page where you can help contribute uh it's just patreon.com slash my retro life and that's going to be for all the new episodes coming out uh which they're so worth it man that's if you're on patreon you want to do something for anyone do it for this preserving the most beautiful memories in video games in my opinion thank you man thank you that's yeah that, that's awesome that means a lot i mean it's 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 been a ride it's been an awesome ride and it's been so cool to uh to kind of keep dad's memory alive through these videos that people enjoy um so it's can't thank you yeah. enough can't thank you enough no thank you and again last thing i love that when you're talking to me and like ricky and then you refer to him as dad and not my dad i always thought that's cool yeah. how it's not like because you know when you talk to someone you're like oh hey my dad does this but but it's like how we all have this like feel like we have this relationship with him until where you're just like yeah dad did this this and this and, and i don't even blink i'm like oh yep dad did <laughs> yeah no totally man and i feel like i've shared so much of him that i feel like everybody knows him yeah uh, yeah and, he's awesome and that's uh because that's him that's really him i, I want oh, I, it, I want every it's beautiful dude i want everybody to know that and because it's edited you know i've got narration over it and talk that's that's really him that you're seeing in those those videos uh, well you know it's him too because it was at a pure time it's not where he yeah. was like trying to be youtube famous nope. you know it's like that's who he is sharing with the family but yeah but tyler that's it we're out of here all right long live super nintendo and sega genesis and my retro life awesome man tyler s salute everybody out of here on your camera because i can't see you all right see you later guys thanks for joining <laughs>